Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture in the first module of plant biotechnology course. In this module we are talking about the basics of in vitro plant tissue culture and micropropagation. My name is Manoj Sharma and I am working as an assistant professor of plant biology at Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. In JNU, I teach plant biotechnology and genetic engineering at School of Biotechnology. These lectures have been reviewed by Professor Kashmir Singh, who is working as a professor of plant biology at Department of Biotechnology, Punjab University, Chandigarh. And this project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. So, in this lecture, I will talk about the advantages of in vitro multiplication of plants, that is the micropropagation, the economic challenges to set up the micropropagation, and then what are the strategies that can be used to reduce the production costs or uh, to set up the micropropagation based uh, uh, in vitro multiplications. So let's have a recap of uh, last lecture. In the last lecture, we talked about the macro propagation or the traditional propagation where last segment of the plants are used as a starting material. And then we talked about the micropropagation where a very small vegetative segments are used for multiplications and these are usually performed in the in vitro conditions. Then we talked about the various stages of uh, micropropagation that are not just the procedural steps but represent the important checkpoints where usually change in the cultural conditions is required to initiate the next level responses. Right from the stage one where selection of the mother explant is required then followed by the explant preparation, its initiate inoculation or initiation of the aseptic culture followed by production and multiplication of the suitable propagules. That's like uh, mostly the shoots. Once we have these propagules, we need to prepare them to transfer to the natural environment. That is, we need to initiate the rooting and finally, uh, the actual transfer to the natural environment. And then finally, we talked about the various methods of micropropagation, where we talked about the multiplication by axillary buds and shoots, and I discussed it under two uh, categories. One is the shoot culture, and another was the root node culture, followed by organogenesis and uh, somatic embryogenesis, where both the processes can be initiated directly from the somatic cells or uh, directly means without the dedifferentiation process or alternatively the cells of the explants can be dedifferentiated to form the callus and then they are re redifferentiated for morphogenetic responses like the shoot induction. 
So I will start with the discussion on advantages of micropropagation. Now starting from a single individual or a vegetative organ using a small amount of biological starting material, thousands of plants or millions of plants can be produced through the micropropagation process. So here we are starting with a single organ or a tissue and is multiplied in the aseptic conditions. Now these individuals which are multiplied here, they can be used to initiate the multiplication cycle again and in this way more number of uh, uh, shootlets can be produced here. This cycle of multiplication can be repeated several times that can result in the production of large number of uh, plantlets. Now as we are using here the vegetative organs and multiplying them in the aseptic conditions, so the multiplication is not dependent on the life cycle of the plants and therefore it can be done at any time and a small amount of time. Further, all manipulations are performed at a micro scale. That is very small explants are used in the propagation method and therefore large number of plants can be produced and maintained in small space and therefore it can help in the storage of the germplasm and also saving the endangered plant species uh, using a very uh, little spaces. In the conventional cultivation most of the plants cannot germinate, bear flowers or uh, produce seeds under certain climatic conditions and therefore under natural conditions they have long period of growth and multiplication which is dependent upon the seasonal variations. But the, in the micropropagation based multiplication process it is not dependent on the seasonal variation as it is performed in the controlled environment by providing the optimal environment with respect to the nutrient compositions or the physical environment with respect to light, temperature, humidity and so on. And hence micropropagation based multiplication can ensure the regular supply of the plantlets throughout the, throughout the year or all the, at all the times. Micropropagated plants are genetically homogeneous, that is, these are more or less true to the type of the parent plant. These are the clones of the parent and all the features of the parent or the mother plant would be maintained in the progeny too. However, we need to make sure that the tissues used as the explants did not have any pre-existing genetic variability. If there is a genetic variability in the starting material, if something has accumulated in these uh, vegetative tissues, so it will be expressed in the progeny also. And uh, we will discuss about such variations in the later lectures. Next is the virus-free uh, plants or the production of uh, virus-free plants. So the apical meristem culture or the shoot tip culture can uh, be used to, for the production of virus-free plants even when the, all the stalks are uh, infected with the, with, the, with the viruses. In vitro cultures can be cryopreserved and hence can be uh, very helpful for the germplasm storage. Now cryopreservation is the process that preserves the organelles, tissues, cells or any other biological material by cooling the material at a very low temperature typically at minus 196 degrees Celsius using liquid nitrogen or 
may be at uh, minus 80 degree Celsius using the solid uh, carbon dioxide. At this temperature or at these low temperatures, all the enzymatic or the chemical activities, what might cause the changes or damage in the material are effectively stopped. And finally, micropropagation can reduce the time between selection and release of uh, new cultivars or uh, new varieties. Further, the amount of the plant material processed through the quarantine process and uh, released from the quarantine evaluation is very limited or very little amount is uh, uh, released and hence micropropagation can help in expediting the process of new crop introductions after their passage through the quarantine. It can be particularly useful and a good alternative for very slow growing plant species or the species that show resistance to practices of conventional propagation. Now next is the commercial aspects of the micropropagation. Micropropagation is one of the most commercially exploited area of plant tissue culture and the main aim is mass clonal uh, multiplication of the desired plant genotypes. The whole process of the micropropagation it requires significant investments in the form of facility creation, time, resources and labor and therefore in order to have it in a commercially viable or sustainable manner, we need to have a significant returns on the investment made. Three important parameters that need to be analyzed before starting the micropropagation based uh, plant multiplications are one is the selective advantage of micropropagation. Second is the availability or the optimization of the regeneration system and the third is the overall cost of multiplication that is the economics or in, involved in throughout the process. So let's start with the first one that is uh, selective uh, advantage of uh, micropropagation. The question that we need to ask is, is there any selective advantage to multiply any particular genotype through the micropropagation? Now, think if the genotype is able to produce seeds effectively and there is no advantage of the micropropagated clones over the seed multiplied plants. So the micropropagation in this case may not be commercially viable or sustainable option for these genotypes. So now what could be the various types of selective advantages that can make the micropropagation work? One is the propagation of virus free plants. So if the most of the stocks are infected with the, with the viruses or some other pathogens. Micropropagation can be very helpful for creating the clones that are virus free. Other methods of uh, multiplication may not be able to eradicate the viruses from the progeny plants. Other possibilities are if the plants are sterile. So obviously if the plants are sterile these plants would not be able to make seed and so would not be able to multiply through the uh, formation of seeds. Therefore, alternative methods need to be explored and micropropagation can help in the multiplication of sterile plants if they, we have some competitive or economic advantage for these plants. Similarly, the high yielding hybrid plants with the specific characters, maybe attractive color, maybe higher yield, maybe higher nutrient capacity, nutritive capacity or 
uh, some better order type. If we want to propagate the clones of these hybrids, again, micropropagation can be very helpful. Further, micropropagation can be used for the production of uh, artificial seeds. Now, the artificial seeds may be important for those plants which either are not able to make the seeds or if they make the seeds, most of them are not viable. Therefore, in, vit in vitro culturing can play a significant role in the multiplication of uh, such plants. Somatic hybrids is uh, something where uh, the hybrids which are produced by the hybridization of uh, two somatic cells. And it can help actually to stack the traits from two sexually incompatible plant species. So if we want to bring the two traits together in a progeny from two different species which are sexually incompatible, so naturally it would not be possible to do. However, through the somatic hybridization and in vitro cultures, it can be possible and these traits can be stacked into the, into the progeny plant. Next is the expediting the life cycle and propagation. Now, many plants grow so slowly that it can take long time, maybe years to reach the maturity. In addition, these might have very low output with respect to number of seeds produced per plant or the viability of the seeds also. Therefore, micropropagation can expedite the life cycle and help in multiplication. For example, the orchids like Pephiopedlum. It is usually multiplied through the seeds or other traditional propagation methods. However, the seed survival rate of the Pephiopedlum is very, very low and through the other traditional multiplication method, it takes very, very long. Usually, it takes two to three years for one cycle of multiplication. Next is the uh, like medicinal plants. Now, the many medicinal plants are slow growing. They may have uh, very small seasonal windows for their active growth. They may be a very small number of seeds and these may suffer from low uh, seed viability and also they might have very long life cycles. Several different types of uh, medicinal plants that are uh, attracting the attention of uh, uh, the micropropagation or in vitro culturing techniques, uh, these are, one is the endangered species. The species that are endangered or species that are facing high level of threat of extinction like Ginkgo, Porophyllum, etc. Micropropagation can help to conserve these plants. It may be the medicinal plants or maybe the ecologically important uh, species. Then the plant species which uh, result in high value products like Catharanthus, uh, Osimum, Taxus, etc. Their products are important for the modern drug, drug developmental programs or required in various industries like pharmaceutical industries, nutraceuticals or cosmetic industries. So these may be, these uh, plants may be in high demand and also uh, micropropagation can support uh, the multiplication of uh, these plants. Then if the plants uh, that find uh, their use or large scale use in the traditional systems of medicine or the alternative medicines. So these plants are really would be in a high demand if they are, uh, they are part of the alternative uh, medicine system or traditional system of medicine and hence uh, the micropropagation can be successful if the other traditional method of multiplication are slow or if these are uh, difficult to multiply uh, using the seed dispersal or the, using, the, us using the sexual uh, seed production methods. 
like uh, Amblyca or Phylanthus, Terminalia, these all are the plants which are uh, used at a large scale in the traditional methods. And, and finally, the, the crops that are in the focus of uh, genetic manipulations. Now, these genetic manipulations can be for variety of purposes. It may be for uh, improving the overall yields or maybe the improving the nutritional component uh, of uh, the seeds or maybe just to make them robust or resilient to the biotic or abiotic stress factors uh, through which these are exposed. So uh, basically selective advantage is uh, very important for a successful micropropagation setup. Once the selective advantage is established, like it is confirmed that there are economically important reasons, like a particular species is in high demand and uh, maybe the other traditional methods of multiplication are not able to meet the demand. Therefore, uh, in vitro multiplication of this species is important and uh, it can be commercially sustainable. So the next important parameter is the availability or the optimization of a uh, regeneration system. We need to have a efficient regeneration system because this is something which is the basic requirement for establishing a, a micropropagation. Like here are the various uh, stages of uh, micropropagation uh, establishment. Like at the stage one, we initiate the aseptic cultures that are either they are induced to uh, induced to make the callus or other different type of morphogenetic responses at the uh, stage two, and then at the stage three, we we induce these cultures for the production of uh, roots. So all these steps may have different kind of requirements depending upon what kind of uh, response we need to induce. If we are working with a species for which the regeneration system is not available, optimization of the regeneration protocol would be required. More specifically, the production of high frequency shoot multiplication needs to be optimized. Even if the regeneration system is available, however, it is not efficient enough, we need to optimize the efficiency of the system for production of a higher number of uh, plantlets in a small amount of time. Further, there isn't uh, uh, one media composition that would require uh, or that would work for all the species and therefore selection of a right composition of the culture media is very important for establishing successful in vitro cultures. The major parameters that need to be optimized uh, in any in vitro tissue culture environment setups are the media composition, growth regulators and the physical environment. For the morphogenetic responses, optimization of the growth hormone in what concentrations these will be used or in what combination they will be used, uh, we need to optimize them. Basic media composition may vary from uh, among different plant species and then the physical environment also like the, the requirement of the light or the temperature or the humidity and aeration, all these parameters they may vary depending upon the group of plants or the type of species in question. So the overall regeneration is often a difficult process for many of the plant species like adult woody plant materials or herbs and may take long time to establish a successful uh, in vitro cultures. Uh, further, many times the optimization procedures may need large investments as these uh, 
media compositions may be costly or the physical uh, regulated controlled environment facilities which need to be created they may require large investment too and finally is the the cost of uh, multiplication uh, almost at every stage of the in vitro culture investments are required like first the investment to create the facilities like the aseptic working environment culture room growth room or the greenhouses or the low temperature incubation or the storage low temperature storage facilities and then maintenance of these facilities at all the time continuous investments are required uh, in order to control the physical environment like the light temperature continuous supply of the power is required and it also uh, increases or add significantly to the overall uh, cost to run these uh, commercial facilities of uh, micropropagations. In vitro cultures are maintained on the artificial media at all the times and uh, uh, diverse type of nutrients and the growth uh, hormones are required different species might have the species specific requirement and these artificial media components are also costly adding to the uh, cost significantly next is the labor intensive manual handling so all the steps of the micropropagation need manual handling and hence it is dependent upon the human uh, labor force as per some estimates more than 50% of the total cost of any in vitro cultures may be contributed by just the labor cost. And this may even be more depending upon the uh, how much is the cost of the labor like developing countries versus the developed countries. So in developed countries where the labor cost is high, it may even uh, contribute to up to 70% of the total setup cost. Therefore, labor is the biggest individual cost contributor in the micropropagation setup. In vitro cultures, they are prone to the contamination from the growth of uh, microorganisms like uh, fungi, bacteria, and they may result in the significant losses. They are continuously uh, grown on the supply of uh, uh, sugars and hence the the growth of uh, uh, growth of these microorganisms or the, it spread very fast further in vitro grown seedlings they are sensitive to the natural environment and may result in loss of plantlets when these are transferred to the to the hard uh, to the outer environment through the hardening process so Basically, these uh, the losses due to the contamination or losses of the plantlets due to the hardening process may add significantly to the cost too. And finally, is the demand and supply. The cost of the final product will decide the economical viability or sustainability of the in vitro multiplication of any one particular species. If the plant species in question is in high demand and also uh, a handsome price is associated with the each plantlet. It would help to sustain uh, the in vitro cultures. However, if the target product is not required at large scale and uh, the prices are not also uh, very high, it would not be able to result in the economic gains and would not be sustainable in the long run. So the overall these factors are the major cost contributors like uh, right from the first uh, facility establishment requirement of the energy to run this facility cost incurred by the artificial media which is required to culture the in vitro plantlets at all the time and finally the major cost contributor is the the labor requirement of labor because at all the steps manual handling is required 
significant losses may occur due to the contamination or hardening and finally because of the demand sometime demand at at the time when you start the experiment there may be demand but it may suddenly demand may certainly disappear so uh, the commercial success of uh, of uh, any micro uh, micro propagation setup would depend upon the the cost of uh, multiplication or uh, economic stability or the sustainability so why now we have understood the various steps of the micro propagation like right from the first step of the selection of the mother plant uh, media preparation sterilization initiating the aseptic culture multiplication of the propagules and then finally transfer of these plantlets to the natural environment each and every stage has its own requirement uh, depending upon what kind of responses we need to initiate during these different uh, stages and uh, the cost each and every stage add to the cost uh, of the overall uh, add to the and each and every stage or every uh, activity add to the overall cost of the micro propagated plantlets so for the cost reduction of micro propagated plantlets we can work at two fronts one is that uh, we can reduce the costs associated with the technical aspects of the tissue culture that is automating various processes or the steps required for micro propagation so the idea is basically to reduce the manual handling and automate the processes as much as possible and second is to increase or to improve the efficiency of the micro propagation systems that is increasing the productivity of the system with the same resources that means if we can optimize the efficiency of the biological system to produce more product uh, from the same amount of resources this can also uh, add significantly to the cost reductions for the micro propagation setup now the first is the or the one of the important uh, cost reducing factor is the automation of uh, various stages of micro propagation that can reduce the production cost significantly by reducing the labor cost like use of robotics for the micro propagation it can be used for several uh, at the several stages like for the media preparation dispensing of the media in the desired culture vessels preparations of uh, micro cuttings incubation of uh, on the uh, of incubation of these uh, micro cuttings on the culture media or the use of the bioreactors for the multiplication steps however automation has its own challenges while the media preparation and dispensing in the culture vessel can be easily automated more integrated efforts would be required for uh, or to automate the in vitro operations like preparation of micro cuttings you may pick any two plants these are not same and so optimization or the training of the robotics to pick the right explant would be required to achieve this objectives or to automate these objectives like if you are if we are working with the node cultures uh, how to automatically uh, robotics can identify the nodes uh, we need to train these uh, these robotics extensively however in addition use of robotics is uh, not only reduces the labor cost however it has several other advantages also first one is the contamination reduced contamination now the contamination associated with the people is usually more than the machines and it is easier to control the contamination originating from the machines however on the downside if there is a contamination in the culture in the culture managed by the robotics with the use of robotics we will lose the opportunity to detect the contamination at the earlier stages and control 
from the spreading uh, of this contamination into the culture would not be possible at these earlier stages and by the time it would be detected it may result in the significant losses then is the better management now the mani management of the machine is much easier than the management of the human resource so certainly this will help in reducing the cost of the management administration involved in the micropropagation industry next is the operation time now with the several people working together at the same time and also need to take care of the contamination it is usually difficult to uh, do the multiple shifts however with the use of robotics it would be easier to manage the multiple shift as compared to when it is totally dependent on the human resources next is the uniformity in culture machine operations are usually uniform unless these are defective and hence the overall productivity expectations would be more uniform in the robotics controlled cultures people dependent operations or human dependent operations are always dependent on the human behavior that may change during the different time of the day with the long working hours or even the emotional differences or the emotional with the ep emotional episodes too the automation of the physical environment which is uh, comparatively easier to automate like uh, in the culture room environment in the culture room or the growth room uh, or the greenhouse and it can uh, improve the productivity or the survival rate of the uh, plant let's uh, uh, extensively or significantly in the recent years there are significant developments towards the automation of the various steps of micropropagation like use of bioreactors for the multiplication step are being optimized and uh, significant advances have been made in this direction so the bioreactors are usually liquid culture waste vessels that have self contained sterile environment and they are designed for the intensive culture with an opportunity for monitoring the microclimatic conditions inside the vessel like ph of the medium temperature fluctuations or the dissolved oxygen content uh, this is a typical design of a bioreactor and uh, the major component it has the culture vessel agitator aerator or sprayer Uh, or the uh, different kind of probes that are used so we have the here the culture vessel that has a liquid uh, media for the culturing there is a inlet for uh, uh, refreshing the media and here is the sample port to collect the media and uh, the tissues or cells growing inside the culture in the agitator here is the agitator it is used for mixing of the contents in the liquid media and keep the biological material in a homogeneous condition with respect to the availability of uh, the nutrients uh, then uh, we have another important component is the aerator or sprayer which is usually a tube uh, uh, made of uh, steel or stainless steel and uh, it is used to pass the compressed or filtered uh, sterile air for aeration in the culture media then several other probes are used to monitor the climatic conditions inside the vessel like the ph of the media or the temperature of the media now bioreactors are being explored to automate the stage 2 of the micropropagation that is during the stage 2 after the establishment of the aseptic culture in the stage 1 we need to multiply the the propagules and so during this time uh, multiplication of these uh, propagules the uh, bioreactors are being used and a significant advances has been made in this direction we will discuss uh, uh, the role of bioreactors or uh, about the bioreactors in little more detail in the next unit 
So next important component to reduce the cost uh, of the production is the improvement in the acclimation protocols. So earlier we discussed about how the culture environment inside the culture vessel is very different as compared to the natural conditions or in the culture room or in the greenhouse. And therefore, the transfer of the in vitro plantlets from, uh, from this in vitro environment to the, to the natural environment need a special acclimation treatment or care. And if it is not done carefully, large number of plantlets can die during this transfer. Therefore, a gradual change in the environmental conditions from the in vitro culture where the humidity is high and uh, the light intensity is usually low should be changed slowly that the, that the humidity should be re reduced slowly and uh, intensity of light should be increased slowly or gradually to give the time for the, these plantlets to acclimatize to the new environment. Earlier, we studied that the epicuticular wax deposition on the leaves of these uh, plantlets is altered and also the stomatal movement of in vitro grown plantlets are not optimal. So this is a, another area of research where if we can induce the epicuticular wax deposition on the leaves, whatever is the requirements are to match the natural conditions. And if we can induce the development of the stomata to the maturity, that is uh, the stomatal movements are efficient and normal, this can help in the better survivability of these plantlets in the, in the natural conditions when they will be transferred for hardening. In fact, some of the growth retardants have been found to improve these features uh, in the in vitro uh, regenerated plants and they are being explored for their commercial uh, use in the in vitro cultures. The, another one very important uh, factor is the phototropic nature or behavior of these uh, in vitro grown cultures. The in vitro grown plants are always maintained on the exogenous supply of carbon source. And hence, though the plantlets have the chloroplast as well as the chlorophyll, however, these are not fully developed and are not completely functional. Also, the enzymes required for the photosynthesis are poorly synthesized due to the heterotrophic or mixotrophic type of nutrition. It means that these plants are not totally dependent on their own synthesis for their carbon needs. And these plants actually use the carbon provided in the uh, media in the form of sugars. The advantage of the autotrophic cultures is that the autotrophic shoots will be more robust and will perform better at the stage 3 where the multiplication of the shoots is uh, done and then they are transferred onto the uh, rooting media and then at the stage 4 when they are transferred to the natural environment uh, through the hardening process. Therefore, use of the autotropic cultures may reduce the losses uh, occurring due to their transfer uh, or the transfer of these in vitro grown plantlets to the natural environment. Efforts are on to enhance the photoautotropic behavior of the plantlets by reducing the carbon source from the culture media. Now, reduction of the carbon source or the sugars uh, in addition, also help to control the uh, microbial contaminations. However, more optimization would be required to identify the optimal con concentrations of uh, the, the carbohydrate source that need to be supplied exogenously in the, with the media components. Then, resource recycling and optimization of the resources 
or the various components used in the in vitro cultures uh, can also add to the cost savings. In addition, reduction in the cost of the substrate or the uh, culture vessel or the energy resources can further add to the significant cost savings. So in summary, we talked about the advantages of the micropropagation, challenges associated with the sustainability, and then we also discussed about the various strategies that can be implemented to reduce the production cost of the micropropagated uh, plantlets, uh, which is crucial for the commercial success of the micropropagation. Thank you.